Over the past few weeks, Montreal has seen a marked increase in violence linked to organized crime. In the most recent developments, a man from Brampton has now been charged with a first-degree murder in the death of Claudia Iacono. That's the daughter-in-law of a reported mafia boss who was shot and killed last month as she was sitting in her car outside her hair salon. A well-known mafia member, Francesco Del Basso, was shot dead in Laval. Police say he was a suspect in the attempted killing of the son of late mafia boss, Vito Rizzuto. That was back in March. So for a closer look at what's behind this uptick in crime, we are joined by Antonio Nicasso. He's the author of more than 40 books on organized crime, and he teaches that subject at Queen's University. He's our guest this morning. Welcome. Good morning. Montreal police have a long history with investigating organized crime. What's behind this increased violence now? But it's a power struggle that uh, began in 1974, resuming 2006, and still has a repercussion to this day. Uh, after Montreal Mafia boss Vito Rizzuto extradition to the United States in 2006, uh, many have sought to replace him or gain more decision-making power. And like a pendulum, that have marked the various warring factions. How has the organized crime scene changed in Montreal over the years? But I think we, I don't want to paint a bleak picture, but we have a mistaken perception of organized crime strategy. We think only exists when it shuts. Uh, organized crime is much more dangerous when it operates covertly and we do little to combat it. What about gang wars? Who is involved and what does the battle for control that you were describing look like in Montreal? But Canada is a melting pot for dozens of criminal organizations that use our country for investment and money laundering. Um, we have always thought of ourselves as less exposed compared to our American neighborhood, but in Canada there is a kind of uh, United Nations of uh, uh, criminal organization. The mm -hmm. Each criminal organization has its branch in Canada. And, uh, and, and sometimes they are violent, sometimes they invest money in, in Canada. However, the fight against uh, organized crime is not a priority for any political party. It is fascinating when you create that picture of a United Nations of organized crime in this country, very different than the picture we like to paint for ourselves. What is law enforcement doing to intervene in the violence? I think they're doing a good job, but uh, I, I don't think uh, we do have uh, the uh, right legislation, the political will uh, to fight organized crime, not only on the violent aspect of it, but also in uh, the external relationship, uh, the uh, the relation that they entertain with, uh, with uh, businessmen, uh, politicians, uh, professionals of any kind. Antonio, when you look at these headline events, uh, what do you see? What interests you? But, of course, uh, it's, uh, it's all about uh, money and, and, and greed. Uh, Montreal uh, uh, is important because it's one of the main entry port for cocaine in North America. But also uh, the dynamic of power, the dynamic of uh, succession, the idea that uh, they are trying to control all kind of uh, uh, criminal activity and to do so, they are willing to use violence and to eliminate to any rival uh, uh, gangs. Antonio, fascinating conversation today. I'm going to keep that image with me. The United Nations of organized crime in this country. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.